This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is on angular impulse and momentum. It's from chapter 15.5 through 15.7 of the book Dynamics by R.C. Hibbler. Today's objectives, you will be able to determine the angular momentum of a particle and apply the principle of angular impulse and momentum. And you will be able to use the conservation of angular momentum to solve problems. Activities include applications, We'll define angular momentum, we'll talk about angular impulse and momentum principle, and the conservation of angular momentum, and then we'll do some problem solving. So here we have a, a satellite at two positions, A and B. Uh, as the distance from the center of the Earth changes, how does the velocity change? Here's a ride at an amusement park, and down here we see the free body diagram. As this person moves further away from the z-axis or close to the z-axis, what happens to his velocity? These sorts of problems can be solved using angular momentum. Okay, first some definitions. I'm going to define angular momentum for you. Uh, we represent it by h, and so the angular momentum about this fixed point O, it's very important, this point is fixed, it's not moving, uh, is equal to r cross mv. So r, of course, is the position vector to the particle, and v is its velocity. The magnitude of this vector is equal to the mass times its velocity times d. Now d is the perpendicular distance to the mv vector from the point O. Okay, now we're going to talk about the relationship between the moment of a force and angular momentum. Uh, you may remember from previous section the summation of the forces is equal to uh, the mass times v dot. Now that's Newton's equation of motion, and I'm saying that the acceleration is equal to v dot. Well, what if I take the cross product on both sides with r? So I say r cross summation of forces is equal to r cross m v dot. And I can do that because I'm doing the same thing to both sides of the equation, taking the cross product with r. Well, this term right here is nothing other than the summation of the moments about O. <clears throat> but let's take a closer look at this term right here. Let's go back to the definition of angular momentum. It is R cross M D. So what if I want to take the derivative of both sides with respect to time? Well, I can write this side as h dot, and the derivative of cross product, you can look that up in the appendix, but this comes out to be r cross m v plus r cross m v dot. But look at this second term right here, v dot is just equal to r dot. So I can rewrite that term as r cross m r dot. Well, vector cross product with itself is equal to zero. So this second term is zero. So I'm left with the time rate of change of the angular momentum is equal to r cross m v dot. So I went from Newton's equation of motion right here to this equation right here. So what happens when we have a system of particles? Well, let's write our equation down again. Summation of moments about O is equal to r cross f which is equal to the time rate of change of the angular momentum. Remember now, angular momentum is R cross MV. So in a system of particles, I have internal forces, F sub I, and I have external forces acting on the system, F sub I. So when I sum the moments, it'll be the sum of R sub I across the internal forces plus the summation of R sub I across with the external forces is equal to the time rate of change of the angular momentum. Well, this term is zero because the internal forces occur in equal and opposite pairs. So therefore, for a system of particles, the summation of moments about a fixed point is equal to the time rate of change of the angular momentum. So that means I can sum all the moments about point O resulting from the external forces, and that'll be equal to the time rate of change of the angular momentum for the whole system of particles. 
So now we're going to move into section 15.7, the principle of angular impulse and momentum. So let's write our equation down again, the summation of moments about a fixed point O is equal to the time rate of change of the angular momentum about the fixed point O. I can also write this as dH dt. Bring dt to the other side of the equation. And so I have this. I can integrate both sides, t1 to t2. And this side becomes the angular momentum about point O at state 2 minus the angular momentum about point O at state 1. Bring this term to the other side, and I can say that the angular momentum about a fixed point O at state 1 plus the summation of all the moments about the fixed point O integrated over time between points 1 and 2 is equal to the angular momentum of the system at state 2. So this is a very important equation here. It's very similar to the uh, linear momentum equation we went over earlier. And I can also, since HO is equal to R cross MD, I can say that the uh, summation of R cross M V sub I plus the summation of all the moments acting about the fixed point O is equal to the summation of all the angular momentums about the point O at state 2. So this is state 1. And this term right here we call the angular impulse. So let's talk about conservation of angular momentum. If the resultant force on a particle passes through the fixed point O, the summation of moments about point O is going to be equal to zero. The second term in the previous equation we just saw goes to zero. So I can say that the angular momentum of about point O at state one is equal to the angular momentum of the system about point O at state two. So this is conservation of angular momentum. It only occurs, of course, when the external forces uh, pass through the um, fixed point O. So let's do an example. We have these two identical 10 kilogram spheres. And they're attached to a rod, which rotates in the horizontal plane. That's very important because since it's in the horizontal plane, the weight vector goes in to the board here. And so the moments due to the weights are zero. Uh, the spheres are each acted upon by a force of 10 newtons, and the rod is subjected to a couple moment uh, equal to 8 times t, where t is time. So find the speed of the spheres at t is equal to 4 seconds if the system starts from rest. So we're going to apply the principles of conservation of energy and conservation of angular momentum to this system. So let's write down our equation. We have the, for system of particles, the angular momentum at state 1 plus the angular impulse is equal to the angular momentum of the system at state 2. So let's remember now H is R cross M V. We were told the system started from rest so the initial velocity is 0 so therefore the initial angular momentum is 0. Now the next term, I want to sum all the moments about O and integrate over time. So I have three things going on here. I have two forces and this applied moment here. So the moments due to the part to the force P, there's two of them, so I can say uh, two times the integral of the moment of those forces about the point O, which is going to be 10 times the radius, which is 0.5 meters, integrated over time from 0 to 4 seconds. So this is the angular impulse due to the two forces, P. I also have an applied moment, so I need to add that in. And the moment is a function of time, so from 0 to 4 seconds, 8t dt. And that is equal to the angular momentum at the final state, 2, which, remember, is r cross mv. So I have two masses, and they're moving with some velocity, so 2 times r, r is 0.5. The velocity is unknown, and the mass is 10 kilograms. 
So this comes out to be 10t evaluated between 0 and 4 plus 4t squared evaluated between 0 and 4 is equal to 10 times the velocity that's at state 2. So when you solve this, it comes out that the velocity is 10.4 meters per second. Here's another problem. We have four or five pound spheres that are originally attached to this cross bar frame, uh, which has negligible weight. A moment acts on the shaft as shown here. It's also a function of time as in the previous problem. It's equal to 0.5 t plus 0.8 foot pounds. Find the velocity of the spheres after four seconds starting from rest. Our plan, just like last time, is to apply the principle of angular impulse and momentum about the axis of rotation, which I'm going to call the z-axis. So let's write down our equation, the angular momentum about z-axis at state 1, plus the sum of the moments about z integrated over time is equal to the angular momentum of the system about the z-axis at state 2. So remember, h is r cross mv. Well, the initial velocity we're told is 0, so this term goes to 0. The second term here, the moment it, about z is a function of time, so we need to integrate that. So the integral of summation of moments about z-axis over time is equal to, this is from t1 to t2, you know, the integral from 0 to 4 seconds of the moment, which we were told is 0.5t plus 0.8 integrated over dt. So this comes out to be 0.5 over 2 times t squared plus 0.8t. You got away between 0 and 4. And that comes out to be 7.2 pound foot seconds. By the way, that's the unit of angular momentum, pound foot seconds. And the last term here, the angular momentum about the z axis at state 2. Four spheres, the distance from the center is 0.6 r, the mass 5 pounds, so it's 5 over 32.2 times the velocity, that's what we're looking for. So I'm running out of room here, but you set this equal to 7.2 and solve for v2 and it comes out to be 19.4 feet per second. This concludes 15.5 through 15.7 angular momentum. Next up is chapter 16, planar kinematics of a rigid body.